Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to today's session. This is another session on subcutaneous infections. We have already seen a pustule caused by Staphylococcus aureus which was relatively benign. Today we are seeing a pustule which is little difficult to treat and may have more serious repercussions, the malignant pustule. The outline of the lecture is shown. We will discuss the clinical presentation of a case of malignant pustule and its laboratory diagnosis. We will also discuss the types of anthrax their pathogenesis and epidemiology of anthrax, the vaccines against anthrax and other important bacillus species will also be discussed in brief. The typical case history of this malignant pustule, a 50 year old farmer from Karnataka presented to the OPD with complaints of swelling which appeared on his back 10 days back, it became vesicular, ulcerated and partially healed with a scab formation but again an ulcer appeared and it refused to heal. He gave a history of carrying a dead sheep on his back for burial 15 days back. On examination, the swelling was 6 cm by 4 cm. There was an ulcer in the center with a black scar. Vesicular lesions were seen on the periphery of the lesion. A lymph node at the base of the neck was inflamed. The temperature of the patient was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Pulse was 120 by 82. Systemic examination showed no abnormality. The picture shows the malignant pustule as it was seen at the time of arrival, you can see the black scar and the vesicles around the black scar. The patient was given ciprofloxacillin 500 mg BD for 10 days. Local dressings were done after sample collection. The sample which was collected was vesicular exudate. It was collected from the region using two swabs. One swab was smeared on a slide fixed and stained by the gram stain to study the morphology of the infecting organism. Another swab was placed in carry blair medium for transport to the laboratory for culture. All collections and transport done under strict aseptic precautions by experienced staff. On microscopy, the smear showed plenty of pus cells, gram positive bacilli about 4 to 8 micron in size by 1 to 1.5 micron. So, they were fairly large rectangular bacilli seen in chains with a halo of a capsule around them. This, is, this particular picture shows the gram positive bacilli present in chains and the plenty of pus cells that you see there. So, they, they give a halo of a capsule but the capsule is not very clearly seen. So, another slide was stained with polychrome methylene blue. It showed an amorphous material, purplish material around the bacteria. This is known as the Macfadine reaction and represents the capsular material around the bacteria. So, this purplish material around the bacteria is the Macfadine reaction. So, with, when you stain the bacteria with plain a methylene blue, you get this purplish material around the bacteria. The bacillus has a polymer of d acid capsule around the entire chain. This can be demonstrated by India ink and fluorescent labeled antibody. This is a picture of the India ink preparation showing the clear capsule around the full chain of the bacteria and the second is the fluorescent labeled antibody stain which confirms that the organism was bacillus anthrax. For culture, a swab was plated on cheap blood agar and a selective medium that is nutrient agar containing penicillin. It was incubated aerobically at 37 degrees centigrade. All cultures are highly infective if malignant pustule is suspected. It must be handled in specialized laboratories with biosafety level 3 facilities and all working must be done in the biosafety cabinet. The colonies on sheep blood agar showed irregular beta hemolytic colonies. 2 to 3 millimeters in size with a zone of hemolysis around them. The plate on the left, left hand side shows the typical colonies of bacillus anthrax. Now, the margins of the colonies, if you see them under the microscope, will give you this sort of an appearance which is described as a Medusa head appearance. Now, who was Medusa? The picture at the bottom shows a picture of Medusa. Medusa is from Greek mythology. She was supposed to be a gorgon or a monster with having snakes in her hair. And the edge of the colony looks just like that. 
kill anybody who saw her turned to stone. So she was fairly dreaded and difficult to captivate till Perseus captured her. But the hair had actual snakes on it, and that is exactly the appearance which you see with the colony of Bacillus anthrax. Surprisingly, the same organism, when you grow it on a medium containing penicillin, gives a drastically different appearance. The cells become large, spherical, and appear in chains on the surface of the agar. Colonies are smooth and have been likened to a string of pearls. So, you can see the difference in the colonies in the medium containing penicillin as versus the medium not containing penicillin, which look like the Medusa head colonies. After smears were made from these culture, the picture on the culture was very different from the picture which you saw in the original smear. Here, a lot of spore containing bacilli were seen. The gram stain of the colony showed large gram positive sporulating bacteria in chains. Spores were central, oval in shape, but of the same width as the bacillary body, so they did not enlarge the size of the bacillary body, which we saw in Clostridia. In Clostridia, when we saw the organism, they were larger than the bacillary body, so they gave a spindle shape to the bacterial body. Here, the bacillus spores are the same as the bacterial body, so they do not enlarge the bacterial body in any size. Now, the spores are characteristically only seen in culture medium, they are never seen in tissues. In tissues, the capsulated appearance which we saw earlier is seen, while in spore culture medium, you see the spores. The spores are produced under adverse conditions and they can be demonstrated by using special spore strains like the acid fast strain. The organism is non motile. Now, to confirm the identification of Bacillus anthrax, which is very, very important, it can be put into a gelatin medium. It gives gelatin liquefaction, giving an inverted fir tree appearance, as you can see in this picture because there is more growth on the surface and very little growth is the depth. So, the gelatin is liquefied in that shape and it gives an inverted fir tree appearance. It is catalase positive, nitrate positive, glucose, sucrose, maltose are fermented with acid only. So, it does break down sugars with production of acid only. Now, to confirm that this is definitely anthrax, we have a gamma phage which has a capacity of invading into the anthrax bacilli and causing destruction. So, on a culture of bacillus anthrax on blood agar, a drop of the gamma phage is put in and at that area where the drop is put in, you will get a zone of clearing. So, just like this, you see a zone of clearing in this culture of bacillus anthrax. This zone of clearing has been caused by putting a drop of gamma phage in it. This is characteristic of bacillus anthrax and is almost confirmatory that the organism that we were dealing with is bacillus anthrax. The identification of the organism can also be confirmed by newer techniques like the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR as it is commonly known. With the PCR, we can either detect the 846 base pair capsular gene or the 639 base pair S layer gene or the 596 base pair protective antigen gene or the bacillus anthracis. So, the final laboratory report since we got all these PCRs positive went as bacillus anthracis isolated. Guidelines for identification of anthrax have been given by CDC. Any gram positive bacilli with general morphology and cultural features of anthrax, which is non motile, non hemolytic on blood agar, catalase positive can be given a presumptive report of anthrax. For confirmation, it must be confirmed by lysis, by gamma phage, direct fluorescent antibody for capsular specific staining, and cell wall polysaccharide antigen. So, we saw the picture of the direct fluorescent antibody for capsular staining, which showed a clear capsule around the organism and PCR for specific chromosomal markers, which we have just discussed. So, since all these were positive in this patient, the patient was labeled as anthrax, which is not very common in this country, but there are pockets of endemic foci in, the, in India. Center for Disease Control USA has recommended that in uncomplicated uncompl cutaneous anthrax, a single oral agent, whether fluoroquinolol or doxycycline can be used for 7 to 14 days. This particular patient was given ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams BD for 14 days. If associated with systemic antitoxins against protective antigen can also be given. This particular patient was not given these antitoxins because he had no systemic signs. Anthracyl human immunoglobulins can be used or a monoclonal antibody against the protective antigen can be used because if the protective antigen does not attach to the cell, no further signs will appear. Now, what exactly is anthrax and how does it normally present? The word anthrax comes from the word cold, which gives the black color of the escar. It is a zoonotic disease and human anthrax is usually contracted from animals. Incubation of the period can vary from 1 to 60 days with an average of 7 days in most patients. 
Animals are infected usually by ingestion of spores in the soil. Animal to animal infection usually does not occur. Apart from cutaneous manifestations, it may have other manifestations also such as pulmonary or intestinal manifestations. Cutaneous anthrax, the form that we have just seen in this particular patient was presenting as a malignant pustule. The bacterium entered the skin when handling contaminated wool, animal hair or other products of infected animals. This particular shepherd had taken a, uh, an infected sheep on his back and probably the spores from the sheep had caused the malignant pustule. Pulmonary anthrax can occur by inhalation of spores and usually occurs in people working in wool factories. Intestinal anthrax can occur by spread from fly stomoxys calcitrans which when it sits on infected animals gets infected and can then sit on food and cause infection. Cutaneous anthrax though it finally presents as a malignant posture can also be present as Hyde Porter's disease. So it's an occupational disease commonly seen in dock workers carrying hides and skin on their back. Sites affected by cutaneous anthrax are face, neck, hand, arms and back. When you shave with the brush of hair, animal hair which has been infected with anthrax, you can sometimes get a malignant pustule on the face because when you are shaving, you are shaving with this infected shaving brush. It will go through these stages in infected anthrax. First there will be a papule in the first three days which later on becomes vesicular with clear blood and fluid in it, edema and necrosis at the center covered by the black scar and then again it will break down and you will get fresh vesicles at the periphery. So, these are the stages in which the malignant pustule goes through as it is occurring in the human body. The pulmonary anthrax or as it is often referred to as the wool sorters disease is characterized by an inflammatory reaction in the trachea and bronchi and it often results in a hemorrhagic bronchopneumonia as shown in this particular x-ray. It is followed by pleuropericardial effusion and septicemia. Complications of pulmonary anthrax can also be hemorrhagic meningitis. Now anthrax though it usually occurs in the people working in wool factories, recently we have had cases of bioterrorism where anthrax was spread by using infected letters. The next day type of anthrax is the intestinal anthrax which I told you was transmitted by the fly stomoxys calcitrans. It is found in the community who consume improperly cooked infected meat. The ingested spores are transmitted to the food by stomoxys calcitrans and they cause when ingested cause severe enteritis presenting as bloody diarrhea and it has a high fertility. All these three types of anthrax whether it is cutaneous, whether it is pulmonary or whether it is intestinal can finally result in septicemia and present as septicemic anthrax which develops in untreated cases of all the three types of infections that is pulmonary, intestinal, cutaneous. So the cutaneous infection though it appeared mild in this particular patient that we had, if he had left it untreated could have landed up with septicemia and the patient could have been seriously ill. Fortunately the patient presented to the outpatient at an early stage and the treating clinician kept a high index of suspicion specifically because the patient said that he was from Karnataka and patient was treated well in time and did not land up with septicemic anthrax. The pathogenesis of anthrax basically depends on its two virulence factors. One is the capsule which inhibits opsonization and phagocytosis. A non-capsulated stain which is often used in vaccines is not infective. Second important virulence factor in the anthrax is the exotoxin. Now this exotoxin is plasmid mediated, it inhibits phagocytosis and blocks the leukocytic oxidative activity. It consists of three components, factor 1, factor 2, factor 3. Factor 1 is the edema factor often referred to in short as EF, factor 2 is a protective antigen referred to as PA and factor 3 is a lethal factor referred to as LF. Now let us see how they act. The binding of the protective antigen to receptors on the target cell occurs the first antigen it is the first antigen to bind on the cell surface and any antibody prevents this protective antigen from binding to the cell surface it becomes protective for you and helps you get to avoid anthrax. It is also provides the attachment site for the edema factor and the lethal factor. The edema factor is an adenyl cyclase which is activated inside the cell leading to accumulation of cyclic AMP and finally cell death. Entry of the lethal factor in the target cell also causes cell death by decreasing the cell kinases. Now this is summarized in this particular picture where we have seen that this is a bacillus anthrax at the left hand corner. Now it is producing all the three factors that is the 
protective antigen, the lethal factor and the edema factor. The protective antigen is what comes and binds onto the cell surface. Now, this is come and bound onto receptors onto the cell surface. Once it is bound onto the cell surface, many of these antigens get together and form a little ball. Onto this little ball, either the edema factor and the lethal factor come and join and because of getting attached to the protective factor, they enter into the cell. The whole thing is put into an endosome and it enters into the cell. Now, once it is entered into the cell, the edema factor causes an accumulation of cyclic EMP, causes edema in the cell and eventually cell rupture. The lethal factor also causes a decrease in the kinases in the cell and causes necrosis and hypoxia. So, basically both of them finally lead to cell death. Treatment for other variations of anthrax, we have seen for the cutaneous variations, antibiotics which were used were either doxycycline or ciprofloxacillin. In pulmonary variation, antibiotics plus antitoxins are also used. Antibiotics have no effect once the toxin has formed and entered the cell. So, it is important to think of a diagnosis of pulmonary anthrax early in the stage of the illness before the toxins have formed and cause destruction in the cell. A com common complication of pulmonary anthrax is anthrax meningitis which would require three antimicrobials including clindamycin, chloramphenicol, rifampicin, erythromycin or clar clarithromycin for 60 days. So, it requires prolonged therapy. So, the most difficult of all the clinical manifestations of anthrax to treat is the anthrax meningitis. Looking at the epidemiology of anthrax, anthrax is known to occur globally. So, it is not that the disease has vanished from the face of the earth. It is most common in dry agricultural zones. These include South and Central America, South and Eastern Europe, Asia, Africa and the Caribbean and the Middle East. In fact, it has not been commonly reported from the United Kingdom. Anthrax is enzootic in certain states in India, specifically in the southern and eastern states. Anthrax cases have been reported from Andhra Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Tamil Nadu, Orissa, Karnataka and West Bengal. The anthrax has recently been in the news for biological warfare. In the days following the 9-11 terrorist attacks in USA, anthrax lace letters were mailed to offices in New York and to the US Senate in Washington, thus spreading fear and panic across the globe. Now, these anthrax letters, specifically if they are opened in a room with a fan or some ventilatory source, the anthrax pores are released into the air and they are easily inhaled settle down in the lung and cause pulmonary anthrax. Now, in India also several letters were emailed to various people. In fact, in Pune itself, we had about 50 letters being coming to the department by the postal department where we tried to look for anthrax by culturing them in a biosafety cabinet. Luckily, none of them had bacillus anthrax in it. Now, bacillus anthrax is an ideal bioterror weapon. Why? Because the infection is highly fatal and when transmitted through inhalation is almost always fatal. Anthrax spores can remain viable for several decades and can be easily produced in large quantities at very low cost. So, it is really a poor man's nuclear weapon. It is easy to weaponize and disseminate as colorless and odorless when it is collected in large forms. Now, an interesting story related to anthrax and bioterrorism. There is an island on which the British government tested the feasibility of using anthrax for attack in 1942. This was the Grenard Island and it is now known as the Anthrax Island. Eight sheep were placed on the island and a bomb filled with anthrax spores was exploded on the island. The sheep began dying within days of the bomb being exploded. Decontamination was unsuccessful for many years. All sorts of chemicals were tried but the, finally the island was quarantined and it was left unused. Finally, 280 tons of formaldehyde was sprayed and the island was declared safe for use on 24th of April 1990. So, the spores of bacillus anthrax are very hardy. When they get into the soil, they can survive in the soil for many years. It is important to be able to diagnose anthrax in animals. Because if you can suspect anthrax in animals, the animals can be appropriately handled so that they do not continue to transmit anthrax to human beings. How can this be done? By taking contaminated tissue from the dead animal and applying it over the shaven skin of a guinea pig the guinea pig will die and this fatal infection indicates that the animal which was initially dead was caused by anthrax because this rapid transmission of anthrax through the shaven skin of the guinea pig occurs only through organisms like the anthrax. Then the dead tissue of the animal can be fixed on a smear and stained by the direct fluorescent antibody test. 
smear of which we have already seen previously, this will confirm that the organism that we are dealing with is anthrax. Serological demonstration of the antigen can also be done in the dead tissue of the animal. The dead tissue of the animal is ground, boiled and overlayered with antisera to get a ring at the junction. This is known as the Ascoli's thermoprecipitation test. So this is dead tissue of the animal which has been boiled and ground and overlayered with this antisera. At the junction of the two we get this particular ring and since this is done after boiling, this is referred to as the Ascoli's thermoprecipitation test. Now how do you prevent it? By hygiene and biosafety, improvement of factory hygiene and proper sterilization of animal products, carcasses of animals suspected to have died of anthrax should be cremated or deep buried with lime. So ideally they should be cremated. If cremation facilities are not available, they can be deep buried with lime and the area cordoned off and not kept for use for the next few years. Immunization of animals and people working with animals is also important. For bioterrorism, one has to be aware and be able to suspect it. If you see cases with a pustule which is not healing or consistently pneumonia in a particular area, bioterrorism also needs to be suspected. It just requires a high index of suspicion. For profile access, human vaccines are available. The Stern vaccine is a historical vaccine. It is a spore of non-capsulated avian mutant strain. This was the first vaccine used by Pasteur and demonstrated its efficacy on sheep. The Mazuchi vaccine is a spore of a stable attenuated Carbazo strain in 2% saponin. The newest vaccine is the anthrax vaccine absorbed vaccine, the AVA biothrax, which is obtained from culture of Bacillus anthracis having only the protective antigen. The dosage of this vaccine is 5 doses pre-exposure. Post-exposure, you can be given with antibiotics. Along, the vaccine is also given so that it can protect the person from getting anthrax. Now, the Bacillus anthracis is a very important organism for microbiology. It has got a lot of historical facts attached to it. It is the first pathogenic bacteria to be seen under the microscope. It is the first bacteria to be grown in pure culture and shown to possess spores by Robert Koch. So it was really the first bacteria which was handled by Robert Koch and shown cultured in artificial culture medium. It is the first communicable disease to be transferred experimentally by inoculating infected blood by Devin. It is the first attenuated vaccine against Bacillus anthrax was produced by Louis Pasteur and he demonstrated this in an ex elegant experiment to all his colleagues. The genus Bacillus is also important for a few other things. The important members of this genus, the pathogenic ones, are Bacillus anthracis, which we have just seen in detail. Bacillus cereus causes food poisoning, which you will see later in the lecture on food poisoning. And rarely Bacillus subtilis, which is common in the environment, which contaminates all the media in the media room sometimes if adequate precautions are not taken, can cause infections in an immunocompromised host. Now, bacillus, because it is so difficult to destroy, is definitely used to check your sterilization, that your sterilization has been effective or not. So, whenever you are sterilizing with an autoclave, the control to be used is the bacillus stereothermophilus. When you are sterilizing by the ETO or the ethylene oxide, the control strains which can be used is bacillus globigii and bacillus subtilis. When you are sterilizing with ionizing radiations, the control strain to be used is bacillus pumilis. So, spores of these particular strains are kept inside the load which is being sterilized by any of these techniques, the relevant spores and after sterilization the spores are again put into nutrient medium and you attempt to grow them. If they grow in the nutrient medium that means that sterilization load was not appropriately sterilized and requires fresh sterilization. So these are all being consistently used to maintain the efficacy of sterilization in the hospital environment. So these are the references for figures which have been used. Because bacillus anthrax has been touching the headlines, many people have worked on it. So these are figures from the net which shows where you can access these figures which have been shown in this particular presentation. Thank you.